Nancy had asked that um, I just give a summary presentation of two major planning studies that are underway in the city right now, which uh, generally will impact the Greenway, and then there's some specific components of them that can be really important uh, for us going forward. The two studies, one is sponsored by the state, um, SDOT, Clinton, you can jump in if I'm not doing this totally correctly, and the other one is by the city, the BRA. Um, so, Jesse, next. So the first study is a, um, a study that's initiated right now by MassDOT about the expansion of South Station. Uh, this is what this project is, it's a three-year planning and feasibility study managed by MassDOT um, that's, that's to develop a plan of action and preliminary design for an expanded South Station. What you're seeing here, this is the South Station footprint in red. This is the site of the United States Post Postal Service, which will be relocated to a site in the seaport area here, opening up this entire site uh, for expanded rail and transportation use, as well as private development. It's right, um, right here, Dewey Square Park. It's sort of the major connector point transportation hub that are feeding people to and from the Greenway. So uh, the kind of activation, the kind of study, and the options they're looking at will definitely affect flow to and from the Greenway, and even some of the development of, of uh, park parcels. The need for this really is, is driven by the demand for more expanded rail service at the station. Uh, this Currently, they're hoping for a 50% increase in Amstrak high-speed rail service. Uh, they'll be looking to expand the commuter rail service there. Also looking at, um, they'll be looking at track and signal improvements, um, new concourses, additional head houses, major private development. It's an enormous project um, and all of this will directly benefit the city uh, in terms of economic and um, service and community benefits. The reason why this is such an opportunity is there's a very large site, the USPS site right adjacent to South Station, which is now going to give them the capacity to really study the most effective use for the site. So it's led by uh, MassDOT. Uh, Catherine Fichter is the project manager. She's terrific, and she's got a giant team of uh, consultants she's going to have to corral to move through this. Um, HNTB and um, Van S. Hagen Russell are the two prime contractors that are working on a consulting basis to uh, DOT, MassDOT. They have a whole cadre of urban design planning, track signal, rail specialists, real estate development, financing people. It's a, a large team. It's a big, big study scope. And then it has all these partners, um, uh, extensive interagency uh, collaboration with different, with the Railroad Administration, with the Post Office, City of Boston, Massport, Amtrak, the whole alphabet soup of agencies that clearly has a very strong vested interest um, in the project. So in terms of the scope of what it's going to be, and I'm going to get to the specifics of why it matters to us about this project, um, with the adjacency here, it's, it's you know, all of the typical rail and transportation um, improvements that they're looking at. They're also a major issue is restoring Dorchester Avenue right now, which stops along this edge, but it's really to make this a continuous edge. Um, this is, will be a new primary access point to the whole South Station facility and it'll also activate this edge of the water with uh, public use on the edge. The other part that's really of interest to us is in this area around Dewey Square, the study boundaries will also include looking at the, the geometry of the roadways, the pedestrian circulation, a lot of which is a really cha uh, major challenge right now. Uh, during peak hours, it's one kind of flow. During off-peak, it's another. Um, there's safety issues. But again, that's such a critical access point for the Greenway there that we'll be working closely to um, sort of give feedback and input. Um, the air rights development um, that they're looking at, the Heinz development proposal, which has been in the works for probably 10 years now, but has been on hold, is major air rights on top of the concourse. Um, 20 years. Tw okay, excuse me, Chris cor it corrects me, 20 years. Um, that proposal has been permitted, but it has not gone ahead, and, and um, that will be evaluated as part of this whole study. So it's, it's an enormous scope. Um, this is just a few of initial project renderings. I believe the BRA developed, excuse me, MassDOT developed, uh, mixing up the two studies. To just give a flavor of the kinds of transformations this project would have, um, showing this whole edge along the side, and this, this, is, this is Four Point Channel, and so right now the head house is here, and it would be a whole new entry point and a new concourse that would be feeding in off of Dorchester Avenue. 
which would be um, a major, major change. Again, showing sort of activation along this edge here, and this is what it would be, furthering the whole harbor walk along the edge of Fort Point Channel. Uh, large project schedule, um, not a whole lot of intermediate milestones. It's three solid years of um, planning, technical analysis, public meetings, and environmental review document. The product at the end of this study will be schematic designs and a completion of the environmental review process. Design documents will not, so you're, they're going to take the study to about a 25% level of design. Um, and feasibility study, and then the next phase at the end of the three-year process would be actually turning it into construction documents and putting um, components out to bid. Clearly a phasing um, um, plan will have to be developed as part of this. In terms of the cost of the study, it's a $43 million um, effort to do the study, and it's funded in large part by um, federal money, and then there's a state contribution um, of about $10 million to this. It's a really exciting project for the region. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, there's a whole lot of interface with different rail um, and transit facilities, which is a lot of technical coordination. Jesse, And then in terms of specifics to us, um, just as I mentioned, here's the existing uh, South Station headhouse right here, and here's Dewey Square Park and Parcel 22. This area all around the perimeter of the building, this corridor through here, even crossing in here into the feeding into the financial district is part of the scope of work to see if there's a more effective way to handle and manage circulation, traffic, vehicular, um, and pedestrian. The scope of the study and the kinds of changes that are happening on this whole area and the kinds of circulation modifications that potentially could be considered could have a direct impact on, on how the Conservancy thinks long term on on kinds of act development activities on Parcel 22. It's right in front of this um, major transportation hub. This is where it's going to be sort of the highest volume of people, commuter access, and you know what we look at long term for what could happen on this parcel. Um, even access across these ramps. I mean, it's time. It's sort of time to think big and not small because of the the scale of this study. Um, and then, of course, there's the associated wind and shadow impacts with a major development here that could create on this area, which would impact the kind of horticultural um, uh, programs we'd look at, as well as development. And then, then to just I we will I will put in a pitch for our, our operations staff, which is just in terms of here's the layout of the facility, here's the conservancy offices right now in um, in the uh, old Wang. I guess I can't call it the old Wang building, but I still do. It tells you how old I am. Um, and we right now are tucked under here with a lot of conics boxes and trying to make um, ends meet as best we can, we being the operations staff. So it's a very large footprint of land. Um, it's a complex program. There's potentially areas that we could um, talk to folks that are involved in the study with integrating some of the Conservancy's facility needs. So it's an opportunity, um, given the longevity of the study, to think about is there a way that any portion of this land um, could or could not be incorporated to help meet the Conservancy's needs. So that's the scope of the study. It's a, it's a big effort, but just to sort of give you a flavor of what's um, going on about that, I'm happy to answer questions maybe about this one, if you have any. I just had a question. I remember a number of years ago there was a similar plan being proposed, and it, as I recall, it fell down on the problem of the post office that mm -hmm. refused to move. Mm -hmm. Post office any more amenable to moving now? Or? My understanding, and Clinton, you please jump in, is that, that they are definitely moving. Um, some small facilities may stay in place, and there's parking facilities and not, but the study boundary are looking at this entire footprint of the site for transportation. Clinton, do you want to, if I misspoke? I think everything that's been said is correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying that somewhat in jest. I mean, there hasn't been. I guess that's the one thing I would just, uh, great presentation by the way, uh, the one little, you know, um, nuance that I would just point out is that there hasn't necessarily been this agreement to move to a particular place. I mean, I think it's certainly correct that the post office has on a number of occasions expressed interest in being in a different kind of facility with different, you know, layout or opportunities for expansion or whatever. I certainly am not going to try and speak to their needs or interests. Um, but we're not there yet at a at a place where they've said, yes, we'll go there, and yes, you can have this land, and this is how much money will be involved. It's that we're not there yet. So, 
Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, Young? The question is, what's the interface going to be between the Conservancy and this study with all its cadre of consultants and how timely can we be involved? Um, Catherine Fichter, the project manager, has come over and spoken to Nancy and to me and our staff just at, at all points along the way. I think another link for us in particular will be the city with the BRA and the Boston Transportation Part Department in particular. Their focus will be much more on sort of the, the um, sort of area circulation and potentially less on the rail issues. Uh, I think they've, you know, your staff has exhibited, a, you know, total openness and, and wanting to collaborate with us and do a great job. You've got a great key team of very talented consultants. I think it's a win-win for everyone. Um, and, but I think it's important to know that we, you, we can open up maybe a little bit of our thinking, um, thinking a little bit bigger, uh, maybe out of the box about that parcel if this is going on. Nancy might kill me, but. <laughs> It's, it's the right question, Young. I don't have a definite answer yet. I know they're doing, they're setting up agency um, coordination meetings and trying to figure out what's the right group of people. I mean, when you look at the schedule and you look at, they probably have 15 different consultants all doing different pieces. They do have um, urban design uh, consultants that are involved on it and, and people that are doing transportation planning. So those can get siphoned off and, and um, certain elements can be worked at independently. I think what we'll do is sort of to want to talk further with you about what's the most sort of strategic time to get involved and, and voice our concerns, be it sort of the bigger picture on developing the Greenway or, or the issues about maintenance and operations that, that could get tucked in. So part of it I think will be, um, I mean my job will be to work with them and figure out what those points are and then report back to Nancy and the board and Georgia and the board and say, now or in two months, let's um, you know get back to you or form a committee of the board if you're in interested about what's the best way to participate. Sure, I, we're really at the beginning stages now, but we wanted everybody to know what, what the sort of scope of this is. Keep in mind that this is a three-year plan. Now, and we all know what happens to plan. It does, you know, it does tend to, to grow in both scope and in time to make it all work. So if we're looking at Dewey and activating Dewey as we've talked about before in the board. Um, I don't think this should stop us, you know. I mean, we, we need to both be understanding what the big picture could be and think very big, but that doesn't mean it should, I don't think, bring us to a halt in terms of what we might want to do over the next two to five years on duty to really activate it. So we're going to be going that, you know, not doing too much that, you know, would be too expensive or whatever, but if we can get other people to and activate during the winter, we might want to still do that, and that that wouldn't be affected by this. So it, it's all part of that that whole process that we need to think about. Uh, but Linda's leading the effort, and I know I know Linda will call us all in when she wants us. And uh, everybody should um, feel free to contact Linda. You know, if you hear many of you are in this community of, of um, real estate and urban planning and everything, and if you hear something that you think Linda should know or I think the project staff too has indicated that they're going to be doing some kind of a regular progress report, a website where, where they're going to let us know too to uh, more publicly to track the progress. So I'll keep you posted. The next one is um, a BRA study that is underway. They'll start in January. Um, it's a long title, so I've sort of come up with a little uh, made-up acronym for this because it's too many words to say at once, but this is a dual, um, why don't we go to the next one, Jesse? It's an effort that is both to update the Municipal Harbor Plan um, for the, the Downtown Waterfront District, I'll explain what this all means, and to um, do the zoning code for the Greenway District. An early effort was done by the city, I mean, last year, um, to develop, it's, I'm going to try to simplify this as best, it's a classic kind of multi-agency planning effort, um, 
to develop guidelines for the Greenway District. Those guidelines were developed after a long public process, an urban design review, financial analysis, and whatnot. They were left as guidelines only um, and not codified into a zoning code amendment. So the, the existing zoning remains the same. The existing zoning for the city does not reflect the fact that the Greenway is there, but the guidelines that were developed um, are operative. They're just not codified. To get to that process, they want to, the city wants to um, update their municipal harbor plan. What that, and I'll show you what boundaries right now. Um, and this is a two year effort as opposed to three, so it's slightly shorter. Um, the Greenway District study is around, is all in this red outline right here. And there are different districts in it and guidelines for you know how, how tall, how wide, what kind of public amenities should happen out there. The Municipal Harbor Plan um, is a document that all, it's driven by the state's Chapter 91 process if, um, for any parcels that are on the waterfront and in a tidal area. They have to, any development that happens um, along the waterfront has to go through a whole separate state process of approval. The, the guidelines for the state process are, um, are fairly stringent in terms of how much lot coverage you can have, um, the kinds of public amenities you can, you can um, include or not. Those, that plan was developed, um, I, can't, I don't know the date, but it is also out of date and doesn't reflect the Greenway. That plan will then inform and add to the guidelines that were developed for the Greenway District, which will then ultimately result in a new zoning for the corridor. I'm gonna to get to why this matters to us, I promise. Next. So um, this is a project where the BRA is leading this. Again, it's a consultant team they've been, they are um, about to hire. There's two finalists currently being vetted. It's going to start in January. Uh, it's about it's a three hundred thousand uh, dollar planning study. There will be a harbor planning advisory committee that's formed, which of which we would the conservancy would be a member, in addition to abutters and community people um, on that. And then there'll be extensive process of public meetings. Jesse. So the need for this, and this is maybe going through it a second time, is the current waterfront zoning doesn't account for the greenway. Um, these guidelines were not codified. And so uh, any development parcels are subject to this chapter 91, which is driven by a municipal harbor plan, which kind of sets forth the community's objectives for public use, public realm, activation, water sheet protection and whatnot. Um, and it's outdated now. There's major development proposals um, that are pending or on the books or about to be refined, which is whether it's Harbor Park Garage or Hook Lobster in this area. Those developments will then be subject to the Municipal Harbor Plan and the new zoning. And so they're, the city is wanting to pursue this analysis and this study so they have current um, and consistent language in these two plans which will affect um, development in the area. A, a key part of it, which is what I'm, which I wanna focus on, is um, they will be developing a range of public benefits that will be triggered by development that happens on the waterfront that's subject to the Chapter 91. And these kinds of benefits are public realm benefits, which are like mitigation for development, and they want to be more explicit working through a public process about what those benefits could be. Next. So the scope is, um, they're going, it's a technical analysis again, it's kind of building on the work that was done as part of the Greenway District study and the work by um, UTIL, and that was a firm that did work initially about a year ago. Um, they're going to be looking at all sorts of kinds of public access, areas for public art, um, signage, wayfinding, sort of what, how can the whole public realm work, sort of areas around um, the aquarium, all these sort of residual spaces that um, don't really tie together uh, the public space behind the, um, the Boston Harbor, the Harbor uh, Garage site, sort of, when you, when you go around the edge um, next to our favorite lawyer's offices and <laughs> goes to the stores and the Hook Lobster site and there's some, again, some residual edges and walkways, all of which the desire is to sort of integrate that into an overall plan that makes sense. And so the two deliverables from this study at the end of two years, there's gonna be an updated municipal harbor plan and then there's going to be a recommended land use and zoning for the corridor. 
And what the, why this matters to us, and this is just to reiterate, and maybe because it's sufficiently complicated, the convoluted, I'm saying it twice, is that um, chapter 91 allows, I mean, I won't read this verbatim, but there can be some deviation to some of the very strict provisions that are, are written in chapter 91. And the, 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 the law itself, the legislation of chapter 91, enables communities to really evaluate what does it want that's unique to the area in which, the, which this plan applies. Um, and they develop their recommendations for the space and the waterfront through a municipal harbor plan. And so that's what happens. Now, what, what's in this plan is um, kinds of amenities or benefits that could be, in essence, almost a trade-off for if there's some variance in the requirements in Chapter 91, and um, some of these issues, would, there's explicitly quoted in the um, legislation, could be used as mitigation for development. And to the extent this, and this stuff could be done, this stuff, nice. Um, these amenities could be done on the waterfront side as well as on the greenway. So there's, there's very, um, it's very relevant to us to sort of think through these kinds of improvements, in, integrate this kind of language um, as part of the Municipal Harbor Plan, and then it can inform private developers that want to, to um, build projects in the, um, the, along the greenway in this area the kinds of amenities that we would like to see. So next. So this is just, um, just to reiterate one more time, the zone of the municipal harbor plan is in this orange. So it starts right about at the Northern Avenue Bridge and it goes up here and it's just, um, um, here's, here's Christopher Columbus Park, so it's just, just right adjacent to that. So this orange area is subject to chapter 91 in the middle of this, along this edge. I mean, the Greenway's in the middle of this, but this is these are the development parcels that are both in the Greenway District study as well as subject to the state um, Chapter 91 requirements. And so they, it's just, so it's, it's looking for consistency and clarity where it's not one document saying one thing and one document saying another. So it's timely for us to be involved in this, um, to speak up, to talk about what kinds of improvements. Um, young, you saw public bathrooms on there. I'm sure hopefully that <laughs> perked your interest. And um, so sort of stay tuned. Uh, it's not gonna start till, till uh, January and we'll be involved in that definitely and uh, we'll keep you posted. So are there questions about this? mentioned the Harbour Garage and Brook Gloucester, mm -hmm. uh, but I think there are other possibilities with the Marriott. Oh, you're absolutely right, Chris. I just flagged those yeah. as the two larger projects. And the aquarium is always a yes. too, so I yes. think there's a lot more than just two sites. Absolutely. This, this was just the two big ones um, that would probably not be able to meet the explicit requirements of the Municipal Harbour Plan now. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. It applies to anything along this corridor. Yeah. The other thing I want to point out is that Chapter 91 also allows some exceptions. So I, I was this morning a community activist that the thing is done when you got the harbor, this will have a it's not. <laughs> Well, I think that people are going into this uh, as a collaborative effort and wanting to really be proactive about planning as opposed to having to be reactive when a development comes along. But the building you're in is a 155 foot zone. <laughs> I'll pass that to Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, we're on the second Clinton, floor. did you want to make a comment? <laughs> Other than my little joke about them being on the second floor, so I think that's underneath 155 feet, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I meant this building. Oh, this, this one. Oh, total, I thought that. This, this is a total violation of chapter one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess the only comment I would make is, and I'm sure this is already on the mind of Linda and Jesse and others, um, just making sure that as we proceed through, or as the BRA proceeds through this process, that we make sure that all of our 
um, concepts for programming as well as potential earned income in the future, you know, are well integrated into the discussion. I would hate to mm -hmm. run into a situation where suddenly we found ourselves <laughs> as, as right. a conservancy um, in a situation where we weren't able to move forward with some of those creative ideas that have been raised in the uh, earlier finance plans and I know in our ongoing discussions. So. It's a really good point. The, the one thing I might add, I'm sorry, did you want to ask yeah, a question? I, I wanted to ask a question. Obviously, I'm new to the, the, the board, but I live downtown, so I'm familiar with a lot of these issues. And I think one of the issues when you're talking about amenities, you're also talking about the other side of the point is what are you willing to swallow for purposes of getting the amenities? Yes. And I haven't heard any discussion about it. Maybe you just don't know what you're talking about as a form of height and mass and things of that nature. Because obviously, it's a green way. So we have to be attuned to the notion of keeping it green, mainly not bathed in you know, shadow mm -hmm. in its entirety. I think mm -hmm. certainly there are trade-offs that are acceptable and compromise that is reasonable, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard any discussion of that. I think have cognizant of the other side of the coin, mainly that there has to be some consideration for the impact on the green Absolutely. It's on the green way, the impacts, as well as on the water sheet. So it's really on both sides of these projects, and, and it's a, uh, it's well, it's trade-offs and it's values, and and figuring out what do you want to gain and and what you know it's back and forth. That's a good point. The one thing I might add that I didn't mention, is, which is part of the study, is um, climate change, and some strategies and thinking about that uh, in terms of development on the waterfront, and that's something that's sort of um, I know Jesse's been bringing that up about. You know, if the storm had been 150 miles north, that we probably would have had flooded vaults and um, very um, wet parks. So um, that issue, I mean, that is clearly part of the scope of the study to consider that, to think about it um, long term in the, as part of the zoning code. Yes, Chris. I had a question for Clinton. Uh, is it uh, parcels 12 and 18 totally dead as far as building is concerned? Mm -hmm. Which ones are 12 and 20 and 16? And opposite Rose Wharf and 12 is up in the north end, just by Christopher Cronin Park, just north of it. The ramparts. The ramparts. This is 18 right here that's right pretty much in front of uh, the Boston Harbor yeah. Hotel. It's landscape now. Oh. I, I think that one is less dead than the other one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> It's I, would, I wouldn't say that anything is dead. Open dead space. But it is, but they were talking about it. Remember, you remember well. Years and years ago, yes. Well, not so many years ago. It was going to be a, a museum, and it was going to be a building for. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. But 12. That, that's what I mean by less dead. 12 is still an orphan. Parcel 12 is this parcel here, uh, back between the north end and um, the market. Another ramp parcel that was slated for a private development. Yeah, just, just to review, about a year ago, party process of the state, the city, and the conservancy to look at the ramp parcels right after um, the, the Y, which was the last of the buildings that sort of admitted defeat on being able to raise enough money to build on those very difficult building sites. And that's been um, it's not able to come together. I think that will come together more after this, this studies are done. And you have to go, you know, you can't do everything at once. And it was decided that this, um, by the state and city that this was really important to get this done. I don't think anything's ever dead in this town or in the state, um, and nothing ever, you know, I mean, it, it could be that something's percolating that we don't know about, and all of a sudden in three months, parcel 12 will be there. But um, for what we know right now, um, we don't think the ramp parcels are a priority um, from either the state or the city. Um, it's, it's, but yes, yes. Um, so, I think that, you know, they still are there. They're a priority for us, particularly, I mean, I think 18, you know, is, is pretty much considered part of the Greenway, and that would probably be the last thing that any of us would probably think, oh my god, we got to do something with 18. 12 really disconnects the Greenway, um, and so it, it, is, it is a priority, whether we do something that's more with um, temporary art to just, you know, do something with the fencing, to do something that we can't do anything costly, but to just do something that makes it not like the Greenway is sort of stopped, oh no, it doesn't. Um, and so I do think, I do hope that as we look at you know budgets going forward and know where we are, that we can figure out something for that. It won't be the big deal, but something to make it so it isn't 
so disconnecting. Um, and we'll, we'll bring that forward to the board as a, uh, and when, we, when we prioritize, when we have a better idea of our finances, um, you know, all going forward. Any more questions, Belinda? Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Sure. Quick thing. Sure. I, since I see Tom sitting here in front of me, can you just raise your hand, Tom? So this is, I just wanted to introduce uh, Tom Evans, who's a member of the Office of Transportation Planning staff, um, as well as Kate Fichter, who you mentioned before, too. Um, so Kate Fichter certainly um, is well aware um, of uh, the Greenway's Conservancy's interest in being involved in the planning process for South Station. Um, and is committed to doing so, but um, a lot of the discussions, I think, you know, some of the more one-on-one -on -one discussions will probably be carried out by Tom Evans um, of our staff as well, um, who I've designated as uh, sort of a key, the key planner on staff um, that will be working with the Conservancy staff on a variety of different issues and already has been um, from looking at some of the finance planning issues um, to um, some of the South Station um, ideas. So I just wanted to quickly introduce him as uh, he might be showing up at future meetings of the Board of Directors as well as at other um, uh, meetings that we have offline. Thanks. Thanks, and thank you, Tom, for taking such an interest. We know you've been down the vaults, you've been around. We, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, so, strangely enough, um, I think we're not only on time and on schedule, but a little ahead of schedule. I just want to preview um, a few things for the January meeting. There will be a January meeting because we will hopefully um, be able to come forward with the um, contract to do the carousel park, um, and we will need to approve that as a board. So we don't know when that will be yet, um, but Amy will be in touch with all of you to try to figure out a time when we can have a meeting um, so we can approve that contract. Um, the, just to clarify, the, the board meetings, you will all get notice as board members. Um, they'll also be posted on our website, and there's a push blast to anybody who's interested to that goes out to anybody who is registered with Amy. So hundreds of people get notified about our board meetings um, and will continue to be um, with the open meeting law. Um, the other thing is, is that sometime, and I doubt it will be in January that we'll talk about it, but we will be talking about the protocol um, for horticultural improvements on the Greenway um, that the Greenway staff and MassDOT staff are working on and will come to a step-by-step process and review in the planning. And I'm not quite sure when that will come, um, but that will be coming sometime in early 2013. Um, and anything else that you want to discuss, we will be discussing. So. Um, keep in touch. Um, happy holidays to everybody, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>